okay, two shorts. <clears throat> One is a semi-train wreck. A bad week and we want to escape. Let's go to the movies, says I. What shall we see, queries he. Well, this, yeah, this. Oh, okay. So we get in the car and drive to a place to spend too much money on 3D glasses and popcorn, hot dogs and Cokes. And besides one other person, we are alone in the theater with a choice of seats and room to stretch. This can't be good, says he. But I love disaster movies, says I. And the movie comes on with things flying off the screen and special effects and a very bad story. But it's entertaining. It goes on my list of things to watch on TV when it comes on the Sci-Fi Channel, and it will. Another week goes by, and again, it's not such a good week. We want another escape. Well, damn it, I want to go, nothing's on TV. How can there be 200 plus channels and nothing to watch? <laughs> I don't want to leave the house. I'm in yoga pants and my witch and famous t-shirt. <laughs> He's in shorts and a disreputable rag that used to be a shirt. Let's order a pay-per-view, says I. Okay, says he, but you pick the last one, so I get to pick this one. Okay, I say. So here we go. We order something I've never heard of. I'm lying on the couch, cats jogging for, for position on my legs, laptop on the floor beside me, a book on my chest. He's sitting in his chair anticipating fun. The movie comes on. We watch. I begin to think I'm really stupid. I don't understand anything on the screen. It might as well be in Klingon. <laughs> I wonder how an Oscar nominee can be this awful. <laughs> he is raptly engrossed in the whiz-bang special effects. Each time I look at him, he's grinning. Is this something I need male chromosomes to understand? <laughs> I shove the cats aside and pick up the laptop. The cats are not amused and will exact their revenge. I look up at the movie on, I look up the movie on Google and feel marginally better when the first review I see says, worst movie of 2015. <laughs> and the second says, I walked out after 15 minutes. I'm not so dumb after all. I'm also exceedingly glad that I'm not drinking heavily. Special effects would have me, uh, not sober me running from the room. When it's over, I'm not, still not sure what I've seen. And so I pick up a book and try never to think about it again. All right, which movie? This, yeah. Jupiter Ascending. Oh, That's what I thought. Yeah. I've never even yeah. heard of it. Oh, it's Don't horrible. Yeah, I, know. I wasn't drenched I love that movie. <laughs> mentioning something about Wimberley, where I live. You still live there? Yeah. Each day, no matter where I go, it's there, staring at me. I can't take a different route. The devastation is everywhere. No matter the road, it's there. The broken cypress trees, the ruined houses, the changed landscape. What trees will now tell me when fall is here? Mine are all gone. But the River Road goats owned by no one made it through, as did the town geese. And Sheila, the wingless, wingless duck, is alive and has gone to an animal sanctuary. But I also see these amazing people who started cleaning and helping and moving and donating. Each restaurant freely feeding the volunteers all day, every day. The hardware and feed store donating rubber boots, shovels, gloves, and masks long before the governor and FEMA ever set foot here. I'm reminded of a Steve Earle song that he wrote for New Orleans, which now applies to us, to this very tiny town. This city will never drown. 